Hello there. My name is Philip Olorom and I want to thank you for joining me today at Let's Talk About Worship. This is where we engage the scriptures to reveal God's mind about the subject of true and acceptable worship as recorded in John chapter 4 verse 24, uh, 23 to 24. And our goal is to be able to create a worship culture that is pleasing to the Father at all times. Today we want to talk about how to identify intervals in major and minor scales, in major and minor scales. But before we go there today, I want to read a scripture to you in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 12 verse 19 to 21. The Bible said and when the Bible said when David saw that his servants were whispering, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said to his servant, "Is the child dead?" And they said, "He is dead." The Bible said in verse 20, then so David arose from the ground, washed washed and anointed himself and changed his clothes and went to the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then David, then he went to his own house and when he had requested, he set food before him and yet, verse 21, and then his servant said to him, What is this that you have done? You have fasted and wept for the child while he was alive. But when the child died, you arose and ate food. I want you to, to understand, uh, you know, that um, worship, is a powerful weapon that can change moods. Worship is a powerful weapon that can change moods. And moods are atmospheres controlled by the spirit you invite. The spirit that you open the door of your heart to. And you do that consciously or unconsciously. So moods are atmospheres controlled by the spirit you invite. Whether consciously or unconsciously. In the book of um, Isaiah chapter 61 verse 3. The Bible says that to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So you see, opening the doors to spirit to control your atmosphere and that is what defines your mood. So David was in a mournful state here. His spirit was, and you know, this, this particular spirit, the spirit of heaviness, is capable of making an individual suicidal. If you dwell there, you know, for too long. There are also anger spirits. There are different kinds of spirits. There are spirits of lust. You know, different kinds of spirits. So, this kind of, you know, um, this type of uh, spirit will push you into doing the un unthinkable things. If you dwell too long there. If you, if, you, if you dwell there for too long. Anger spirit, you know, uh, uh, you know different, kinds of, different kinds of spirits like that. And the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, uh, 20, 27, it said, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Verse 27 says, Nor give place to the devil. So this is telling us that don't stay there for too long. Don't stay there for too long. So the child already died and David had to get out of that mood. And guess what? His way of escape from that mournful mood was worship. So worship can do a lot more for you than you think. If you are angry, worship. If you are sad, worship. If you are happy, worship. You know, so I say to you, people of God, worship in season and worship out of season. Worship in season and worship to get back when you get out of the season, when you have lost it all, when when you've lost, you know, when you've lost it, when you're angry, when you, you know, when you're out of tune. Worship will always get you back. He got David back. It has gotten me back a whole lot of time. It can also get you back. Amen. All right. Yeah. So that's uh, that. Back to our topic, how to identify intervals in major and uh, minor scales all right so let's do a little exercise here to hear intervals in a major scale it's an exercise that we've done in the past and um, uh, um, it's still very much relevant remember what we are trying to do is to be able is to be able to identify the movements and those are the intervals to un to, to understand the movement of music once we go from say a chord to another you know Yes, you know, it's just something, something like that. So it goes thus. Um, all right. Do, re, do, mi, do, fa, do, so, do, la, do, ti, do, do. Again, let's.
let's do that again. Do, re, do, mi, do, fa, do, so, do, la, do, ti, do, do. So that's in ascending order. So the descending is do, ti, do, la, do, so, do, fa. Yeah, so that's what we're talking about. Uh, um, uh, that's the exercise, and we're going to be building on this exercise. And the first part is the part of the major scale. So you can know we know that the scale is a selection of certain notes within an octave, right? Yeah. So, and uh, uh, of course you can move from one octave, you know, to the other. But we have major scales and we also have minor scales, and there is a formula to identifying them. So for uh, um, a major scale. Uh, the formula to define a major scale is whole note, whole note, half note, whole note, whole note, whole note, half note. So uh, that is defined, uh, um, that is described as W, W, H, W, 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 H. So that is whole note, whole note, half note, whole note, whole note whole note and half note. Now to understand what this means, we need to understand what intervals what intervals have. Now, an interval is the distance between two notes. And this movement can be can be measured in by uh, uh, it can be measured in half steps, whole steps and even and even octaves. So, if we consider the key of C, the key of C major, the key of C major is a key without sharps or flats. It's all the white note. It's all you know the natural it's all natural so uh, you know but this formula is capable of determining uh, the uh, of all major keys in music and also on all your musical instrument so going back to so going back to uh, the major the major uh, the major scale so the formula so the formula is so from c to d is a whole note from c to D is a whole note. And why why is it a whole note? C, you can see a black note here. This is C sharp. C sharp here. So from C to C sharp is a half note. From C sharp to D is a half note. So when you move from this and this is half, then plus another half makes it a whole note. So that is C to D is a whole note. D to E is a whole note. Now you see there is no black note here. So from from uh, E here to F, this is an half note. So you can see whole note, whole note, ho whole note, whole note to here, whole note to here. Then the next one is the half note. So from moving from here to here is an half is um, a half note. So now from F to G, you can see. That is a whole note. That's another whole note. Then from G to A, it, to A is uh, also um, a whole note. And uh, from A to B is also a whole note. And from B back to C is a half note. So you can try this on any, any key. Just get on the keyboard. If you're playing any major scale, the formula is whole note, whole note, half note, whole note, whole note, whole note, and half note. And you can go, you know, different keys. Say you're going from the key of F, from the key of F. So from F here, from F here to G is a whole note. So whole note, then from G to A, that is a whole note. So now from uh, um, uh, uh, so from A now to the next uh, to the next sulfur, to the next note is a half note. So this is B flat. This is B flat. So remember we have whole note, whole note, then half note. So the next thing we're looking for is a whole note to go to the next one. So the next one, the whole note is going to be this, this half, you know, B 
this and this so it makes it a whole note and this is another whole note and this is another whole note and before you get to the last tone which is a half note so this is on the key of F so you can try that on any key on all the keys on the major scale so that's the formula for getting uh, for, get, uh, uh, for determining or identifying um, uh, major uh, major scales a uh, major scale now on the minor on the minor scale just, just as we have a formula for the uh, uh, just as we have a formula for uh, the major scale scales we also have a formula for the minor scales as well and the formula for the minor scales is whole note half note whole note whole note half note whole note whole note so that is w h w w h w w that is whole note half note whole note whole note half note whole note whole note and this formula can be used to determine minor scales in music and also in um, all our instruments our goal is to be able to hear these intervals in major and minor scales so let's go with the major scale first and the key of c and see uh, what we uh, and see what we're talking what we're talking about here. All right, so we did it. We did it. Uh, we did an exercise earlier. Do, do, on the key of C now. All right. So one of the one of one of the things that I want us to uh, to get here is the movement of these intervals to be able to hear them. So now from so so from now from from moving from still on the key of C to move from uh, the key of C to to D and also to E F G A B and back to C. Now you need to you need to identify the major and um, and and the perfect the majors and the perfect. So moving from here from C to D is the major second and you'll have been hearing this maybe in, in uh, maybe during the choir rehearsal or uh, um, uh, or maybe in any music lesson now from he from C to D is a major second and moving from C which is the root note to E that is the major third now moving from the root note to F. That is a perfect fourth. A perfect fourth. And moving from the root note to G is the perfect fifth. The perfect fifth. And uh, from the root note to the uh, uh, to A is the major sixth. The major sixth. The root note to the um, to uh, uh, to B now, so that's the major seventh, and the last one is the perfect eight. The perfect eight. Now, so talking about this, how did we uh, come up come up with this? We um. One thing about one thing I really uh, want to see understand is that there's a reason why some of these intervals are majors, and there's a reason why uh, some of them are perfect. The reason is because a major interval can a major interval can come uh, can become can become a minor. It can become a minor interval. For example, for example, between C and between C and E. You know, C and E, this is a major, a major third. But when you switch them around, when you switch them around, you know, E and C, it becomes a minor sixth. It becomes what? A minor sixth. So, and the same thing goes for, if you go from C, you know, if the same thing goes for from C, uh, from C to D. You know, C to D is a major. Uh, uh, this is the ma this is the major second. 
But when you switch it around, you know, to D and C, this becomes a minor 7. A minor 7. And um, a very good way, you know, to understand uh, to understand what we are talking, what we're talking about, is you recall that um, a minor, uh, the formula is W H W W H W uh, W. Now, so if you go from C and D, and you switch it around to D and C, D and C, so you, so here, this is the minor, this is the minor sixth. And how do we know this? From C here, let's count it. From C to here, from C to, uh, uh, you know, now this is the key of E now. Yeah, so so from this to here is a whole note. So we are playing the minor now. So uh, uh, um, uh, from C, from E, from E to F sharp, this is um, a whole note. Now, the half note. Remember W H W W H W W. So this is this is a whole note. Then moving from here is a half note. Then from here you move to two whole notes. This and this. Then before you go to the half one, right? Yeah. So by the time you are landing another whole note, this is going to be a whole note and, and the minor key of you know of E minor. So this is going to be, so this is going to be a minor sixth. This is a, this is going to be a minor sixth. So one, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's going to be a minor, a minor sixth. So going by the formula, and it's very easy. You just need to know what the formula is, and you can switch them around. You know, but in the situation, in the case where, uh, um. In the case, you know, for, for perfect intervals, it is different. For example, if we have the key of, if we have C here and F here, and when you when you switch this around, when you switch this around, so C and F, and, and it goes, you do F and C, you will realize that it will still remain, it will still remain uh, perfect. It does not change. When you use the formula for uh, um, for the major scale, for major scale and also the minor scales, you will discover that uh, the key of F, you know, um, where, uh, for C and F, when you switch them around to F and C, it still remains perfect. So they are both on, they are still on, uh, um, you know, the major scale. It doesn't change when you switch them around. It doesn't change to minor. Yeah, so that is when you can regard to it as being perfect so this is a perfect this is a perfect fourth and the same thing goes for c and g when you switch it around g and c it still remains the same it still remains perfect so it does not change you know like c and d and when you move it around it moves it changes to uh, uh c c and uh e rather you know c and e c and d Oh, but let's use C and E. So for C and E, if you switch it around, it becomes E and C, and that is that becomes a uh, uh, that becomes a minor right there. But it's different from C and F. That's why we call it a perfect fourth. And um, also C and uh, and G is also a perfect fifth. And the same thing goes for, of course, you know, C and C. That is the perfect eighth. Yeah, so um, uh, when we say major second, major third, uh, uh, what, so what that means is that when we switch those keys around, when we switch those notes around, it changes to, uh, um, it falls on, it lands on a minor tone. And that's when we are, we're able to call them for major second, major uh, fourth, uh, major, major sixth, major seventh. But for perfect fourth, perfect fifth, and perfect eight it is the same it does not change when you switch when you switch them around so these are the major intervals and the perfect intervals in a major scale so you can go over this it's very easy it's not confusing at all 
uh, you can just uh, go over it to be able to understand, to be able to understand it. So when the movement, when the movement is done, you will understand that this is where it is, this is where it's going. And you know, there are times, you know, that um, you may be singing a song freestyle and your keyboardist, you know, um, if it happens to be a very good keyboardist, um, when you move, the keyboardist is able to follow you. The, the, the keyboardist is able to anticipate where you're going. And also, there are times that you may be playing, you may be singing to, uh, uh, um, to a tune that your keyboardist is playing and you're just moving along. You know that this is where, this is the next place that is likely to go. You can anticipate that move. Yeah, so this will help. So it's all about the ears. You understand when uh, the movement is about to be done, the type of movement, movement that it is, uh, so that you can be able to land on the right tone and um, and also be able to uh, um, and also be able to just to uh, uh, to nail uh, uh, you know that note you know perfectly. All right, yeah. So this is what I have for us today. We're going to be continuing from here next week. I want to thank you for joining us today. It's been um, thank you so much for joining us all the um, every week uh, to be part of this. Um, please remember to subscribe to our. Uh, YouTube channel, uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook as well uh, on uh, at uh, Philip Olaomi Music, and um, on Twitter as Philip Olaomi, uh, TikTok Philip Olaomi Music as well. Um, you'll be notified when we post more videos. Thank you for joining us today. The Lord bless you. See you next week. Amen. Mm -hmm.